नमस्कार बच्चों वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू द वर्चुअल क्लास इन द प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द वेरियस मॉडल्स प्रपोज फॉर द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एटम बाय डिफरेंट साइंटिस्ट इन दैट फर्स्टली जे जे थॉमसन प्रपोज हिज मॉडल बट ड्यू टू सम स्टेबिलिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स ही कुड नॉट एक्सप्लेन अबाउट इट्स स्टेबिलिटी सो इट वॉज द ड्रॉबैक ऑफ जे जे थॉमसन मॉडल एंड अल्टीमेटली इट वॉज एन इट वॉज अ फेलियर later on rutherford came forward to put his theory for giving structure to an atom he took gold foil and alpha particles are bombarded with the gold foil and he got some observation from that observations he could give structure to the atom right so this is what we have seen and he said that the electrons are revolving around the nucleus but ultimately later what happened niels bohr found out that when an electron revolves around the nucleus then it gets some acceleration when a body accelerates then it must radiate energy when the electrons when the charged particles revolve around the nucleus then it radiates energy finally what will happen all the energy will be lost then the electrons will fall into the nucleus if it happens so then the matter will not be stable that means the matter what we see today will not exist like that in another day but we can see matter quite stable for a long time so this was the main drawback of the rutherford's model of atom in order to overcome all these drawbacks niels bohr came forward and he put forward his theory and he deduced some postulates from that postulates we can understand how the structure of an atom was found out and how he could give structure and how he could explain about the stability of atom now we will see what are the postulates of niels bohr or bohr's model of an atom according to bohr's model of atom the first postulate tells that the electrons are revolving around the nucleus as it was already told by rutherford but the only difference is the electrons are revolving in a discrete orbit the first postulate of bohr's model of an atom tells that only certain special orbits called discrete orbits of electrons are allowed into the atom the second postulate tells that when the electron revolves in a discrete orbit they will not radiate energy and these discrete orbits he named it as a shell or energy level so according to bohr he modeled an atom in which the electrons are revolving in different orbits that means more than one orbits are there in which the electrons are revolving what are those shells or orbits about that we will see now look at the screen here it is the model of an atom and the ring like structure or the shells are the discrete orbits where the electrons are revolving when the electrons revolve in the discrete orbit then the electrons will not radiate energy or lose energy so in bohr's model of an atom there are four shells they are k shell l shell m shell and n shell and all these shells have certain energy levels according to bohr's model of an atom each and every atom of different elements will have these shells or discrete orbits and the electrons will revolve in these discrete orbits so whenever we talk about atom the electrons are to be arranged within the atom how the arrangement of atoms or how the electrons are distributed in different atoms about that we will see now in order to do all this we have to follow certain rules that means there are certain rules by following these rules we can arrange or distribute electrons inside the atom how it is done about that we will see the first rule is the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated on a particular shell or energy level is given by the formula 2n square if it is the first shell look at the screen 2n square n is the number of shell if we need to add electrons in the first shell then we can use this formula that means 
the first shell will accommodate maximum of two electrons that means here 2 n square n is the number of shell if it is first shell 2 into 1 square 2 into 1 square will be 2 so the maximum number of electrons that can be distributed in the first shell will be 2 if we distribute electrons in the second shell then what will be the maximum number of electrons 2 n square the same formula we can use n is the number of shell so we are going to add electron in the second shell so 2 into n n is 2 2 square so 2 into 2 square 2 square is 4 2 into 4 is 8 so the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the second shell will be 8 electrons in case of third shell it will be 18 electrons in case of fourth shell it will be 32 electrons this way we can find the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a particular shell so this is the first rule for distributing electrons in an atom so by using this formula we can find the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated that means k shell will have maximum of two electrons L shell will have maximum of 8 electrons, M shell will have maximum of 18 electrons and finally N shell will have maximum of 32 electrons. Now we see the second rule. The second rule is the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated at the outermost shell will be 8. Now here you see there are 4 shells. The first shell is known as innermost shell and the subsequent shells depending upon the atomic numbers that we will discuss later the outermost shell which we will use for arranging electrons that will be our outermost shell the last shell is also known as outermost shell the third rule which is very very important rule which is the electrons are added into the second shell only when if the first shell is completed that means we have to continue adding electrons by completing the first shell then once the first shell is completed then we can go to second shell without completing the first shell we cannot move to the second shell or the subsequent shells so the rule says that you can move to the second shell only when the first shell is completed so in a stepwise manner we have to add electrons by using these three rules we can easily distribute electrons in an atom so now we will see how electrons are distributed for the first 18 elements that means the first element will be hydrogen up to argon even up to calcium we can see now we will see how electrons are distributed in an atom of different elements in order to do that firstly we should know number of electrons that are present in an atom to know this another important concept we should understand from that we can know how many electrons are there in an atom so the atomic number is very very important dear students atomic number up to 20 is very very important for your level so by heart atomic number of at least 20 elements right from hydrogen to calcium this will help you to find the number of electrons that are present in an atom of elements ranging from hydrogen to calcium the total number of electrons present in a neutral atom is the atomic number so how to memorize atomic number that we will see in the later section in a simple way there are some tricks by using those tricks you can easily memorize the atomic number for now you just refer your textbook from there you find the atomic number atomic number if you know then the total number of electrons you can easily find out if the atomic number is 10 then total number of electrons present in that atom will be 10 so by knowing this we try to distribute electrons in different atoms now we see how electrons are distributed in hydrogen right so hydrogen in order to do that first we have to draw the nucleus we have already studied about nucleus nucleus contains the neutrons and protons right so that has to be constructed first after that the shells we have to make the first shell we know that the first shell will have maximum of two electrons but we need to add only one electron right so here we have only one electron that electron can be added in the first shell itself now before that the diagram what we have made it is called electronic configuration why it is called electronic configuration 
here it is the structure of an atom which shows the arrangement of electrons right so only it is called electronic configuration so we are configuring an atom by arranging electrons so it is called electronic configuration now we see the electronic configuration of helium oxygen sodium and potassium helium has atomic number 2 oxygen has atomic number 8 sodium has atomic number 11 and potassium has atomic number 19 which means helium has all are neutral atom helium oxygen sodium potassium all are neutral so the total number of electrons present in these elements will be its atomic number so helium atom will have two electrons so total number of electrons in oxygen will be 8 so sodium will have 11 electrons potassium will have 19 electrons right so by knowing the number of electrons present in these elements we can easily draw the electronic configuration so and also we know that k shell can have maximum of 2 electrons l shell can have maximum of 8 electrons m shell can accommodate maximum of 18 electrons and n shell will accommodate 32 electrons by knowing these informations and the number of electrons we can easily draw the electronic configuration let us see one by one listen and observe very carefully so that you can do electronic configuration for the rest of the elements right from hydrogen to calcium so some of the important electronic configuration i'm showing here so rest all you can do of yourself so firstly we will take the example of helium so whenever you draw electronic configuration first thing what you need to do is you have to draw the nucleus as we know that nucleus contains neutron and proton so n and p n p you have to write so we know that nucleus resides within the atom so the central part of an atom will be the nucleus followed by nucleus firstly we have to do we have to draw the innermost shell that is the first shell we know that the first shell that is k shell can have maximum of two electrons we now we add two electrons now first shell is being filled by electrons so we have added two electrons now you can see helium has total number of electrons two right so all the two electrons are being added here so we can so this way electronic configuration of helium can be done here a notable thing is the first shell can accommodate maximum of two electrons and we have added two electron so we can say that in helium the first shell has got completed by seeing the electronic configuration we can say for an element its stability if the outermost shell is completely filled then we call such an atom is highly stable so helium is highly stable because it has only one shell and that too the shell is completely filled so it is highly stable that is why helium atom does not undergo any chemical reaction now we see the electronic configuration of oxygen here also the first thing what you need to do is first we will construct the nucleus right so inside the nucleus in order to identify it we can write it as np so it is a nucleus so it has eight electrons right so firstly we have to make the k shell we know that k shell can accommodate maximum of two electrons so we add two electrons here so like this a circle small circle you can make so two electrons added so out of eight two electrons we have added so how many electrons left now six electrons here six electrons are there right now in order to accommodate six electrons we have to construct another shell so that also we will do well for this we have to add one more circle okay now here in the second shell that is l shell we know that l shell can have maximum of eight electrons right so we have only six electrons so we can add the remaining six electrons in the second shell so we add six electrons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 so while adding electrons keep appropriate distance so that it will look nice so this way the electronic configuration for oxygen can be drawn here you see outermost shell can have maximum of 8 electrons right but it has only 6 electron so we can say that in oxygen the electronic configuration the outermost shell is not completely fit it shows some chemical reactivity 
in order to get a stable configuration oxygen needs two more electron so we can say that oxygen is unstable so oxygen atom is unstable and it gets stable configuration by gaining two electrons from some other species or some other atoms so this way electronic configuration for oxygen can be done now we will see about the sodium again for doing sodium we know that total number of electrons are 11 so first firstly we have to draw the nucleus part so nucleus has been drawn now first shell we know that first shell can have maximum of two electrons so i am adding here two electrons so after two adding two electrons we have nine more electrons right so minus two here we will have nine electrons and for that to accommodate these electrons we need to add one more shell so i am drawing another shell that is this is the the shell is l shell and we know that the second shell can accommodate maximum of eight electrons right so we have nine electrons so firstly what we need to do eight electrons we will add so i'm adding here one electron two three four five six seven eight so eight electrons added still after adding eight electrons still we have one more electrons in our hand so this electron needs to be added we cannot accommodate here more than eight so we cannot adjust one electron here for this one electron we need to construct one more shell so i have to make here one more shell that is what is that what is this shell called this shell is m shell and we know that m shell can accommodate maximum of eight electrons but we have only one electron that can be added so one electron we will add here so one electron added so this is the electronic configuration of sodium now we see another typical electronic configuration now we see electronic configuration of potassium so we we know that total number of electrons present in potassium is 19 electrons so we need to add 19 electrons in the electronic configuration we have to use some more shells here so for beginning with i'm making here a nucleus so always whenever you do electronic configuration first thing is you have to draw the nucleus within the nucleus you have to write np so i am drawing the first shell what is this first shell called first shell is k shell and we know that k shell can accommodate maximum of two electrons k shell can accommodate maximum of two electrons so i am adding here two electrons now after adding two electrons how many electrons are left here again 17 electrons are there so for this i have to make another shell so i am making here the second shell so it is not a perfect circle you, you can make your own in a circular form so with the help of compass you can do this now we know that second second shell is that l shell and it can accommodate maximum of eight electrons so i am adding here eight electrons so four five six seven eight electrons are added so after adding eight electrons so eight electrons we have to here eight means here again nine electrons are there right so nine more electrons we need to add so for this we cannot accommodate here we have to make another shell so i am making here m shell so here i am making m shell and we have how many electrons are there still we have nine electrons right the third shell that is m shell can accommodate maximum of 18 electrons right we have only nine electrons can we add all the nine electrons in the outermost shell no according to the rules for distribution of electrons proposed by bohr and bury in that rule we have learned that the outermost shell can have maximum of eight electrons so if we add nine electrons here the total number of electrons in the outermost shell will become nine electrons which violates the rule for distribution of electron so what we need to do here instead of nine we have to add nine electrons only though the third shell that is m shell can accommodate 18 electrons we have only nine electrons we cannot add it because the outermost shell cannot accommodate more than eight electrons so only we have added eight electrons for adding after adding eight electrons we have still one electron so in order to add this one electron we have to make another shell that is n shell we have to include here so i am making n shell over here so the circle is not perfect you can use compass for making circle perfect circle and and you can add the electron so we have added n shell so in the n shell i am adding one electron 
So, this way electronic configuration for various elements are done. Now, the electronic configuration what we have done in short form also we can write. So, atomic number how to write we see in this case we have atomic number 2 right. So, this electronic configuration we can do here first shell can have maximum of 2 electrons. So, we can write 2 right here step wise shell wise we can add we know that we cannot fill a shell unless the innermost shell is complete. So, first shell will have maximum of electrons here total number of electrons are 8 right. So, electronic configuration in short form can be written as a 2 that means 2 indicates the first shell and once 2 is subtracted then we will get 6 right. So, 2 comma 6 is the electronic configuration in short form for oxygen. Similarly, for sodium atomic number is 11 right. So, for this first shell we can write 2, second shell will have a maximum of 8. So, 2 comma 8 that is 10 electrons. So, still one more electron. So, 2, 8, 1 and similarly here in this case we know that in potassium there are 19 electrons right. So, here how to do first shell will have 2 electrons, second shell can have maximum of 8 electrons. Here third shell can accommodate maximum of 18 electrons. If we have only 9 electrons to add. If we add 9 electrons you see in each of the short form the last number what we are writing this is the outermost shell. So, if we add 9 here it shows that it is the outermost shell right. So, we cannot add 9 electrons in the outermost shell. Outermost shell will have maximum of 8 electrons. While writing electronic configuration in short form always remember that the last shell should not occupy maximum of 18. So, here 9 we cannot write 9. So, here I am making it 8. So, this is our third shell. So, for adding one more shell we have to do so, this way electronic configuration can be shortened and by seeing this we can transform the electronic configuration this way. So, this can be written. So, firstly the short form you write it then after that you can convert the short form into the diagram form. So, hope you understood how electronic configuration for different elements could be done. So, four examples I have done for you other examples you just practice at home. In case of any doubts and queries you can contact us for its solution. Now we learn about atomic number. Dear students, as we know that each and every atom has nucleus. Within the nucleus, we find neutrons and protons. Protons are the positively charged particles you know. Neutrons have no charge. So, protons and neutrons constitute the mass of the atom, right? So, the mass of the atom is very much decided by the neutrons and protons. Altogether, neutrons and protons are called nucleons. So, the total number of protons that are present in an atom is the atomic number. So, atomic number can be defined as the total number of protons present in an atom is called atomic number. And this atomic number or this proton will never take part in any of the chemical reaction as the contribution of the nucleons for their chemical reaction is negligible. So, they will not take part in a chemical reaction, right? Now, the atomic number can also be defined in terms of electrons. How it is defined? The number of electrons or the total number of electrons that are present in a neutral atom is also called atomic number. So, if you know the atomic number, then you can easily find the total number of electrons present in a neutral atom. So, only in the previous section, I insisted you to remember the atomic number. If you know the atomic number while doing electronic configuration for a neutral atom, you can easily find the total number of electrons from atomic number. Got it children? Now, we will see what is mass number. We know that from the previous learning, we have studied that the mass of an atom is very well decided by the mass of protons and mass of the neutron. Altogether, the mass of protons and mass of neutrons give the mass of an atom. In the Rutherford's alpha particle experiment also we have learned that the mass of the atom is resided within the nucleus. So, the nucleus is made by the nucleons that is protons and neutrons. So, the total number of protons and the total number of neutrons gives 
the nucleus so the mass of protons and mass of neutrons which are resided within the nucleus will give you the mass number so mass number can be found out by knowing the atomic number in the previous section while doing electronic configuration of carbon we have seen that the atomic number of carbon is 6 which means carbon has 6 protons atomic number represents the total number of protons right so the total number of neutrons will become 6 right so proton is 6 and a neutron is 6 so all together the sum total of the mass of proton and mass of neutron will give you the mass of the atom right by knowing atomic number we can find the number of electrons by knowing atomic number and mass number we can find the proton number or neutron number this way sometimes numerical questions are asked in the examinations so we will see in the later section how the numerical problems related to the mass number is solved now we will see next important concept that is isotopes dear students in nature we find various atoms of elements which have same atomic number but their mass numbers are different such species are called isotopes so isotopes can be defined as the species or the atoms which have same atomic number but their masses are different their mass numbers are different take an example we will see some examples from there you will understand what is isotope here hydrogen hydrogen is an element which exists in three isotopic form the first one you see its atomic number all the three species have atomic number one if you see the mass number mass number in the first case one ma mass number is one on the second case you see mass number is two on the third one it is three mass number is written on the top left corner of the symbol of an atom look at the screen this is the symbol this is the top left corner right so on the top left corner mass numbers are written and on the bottom left corner we have to write atomic number so for carbon if you want to write the atomic number and mass number carbon 6 12 6 is its atomic number whereas 12 is its mass number on the top right corner the valencies are written what is valency about that we will see in the just next section on the bottom right corner you will write the atomicity so by seeing the corners you can find the nature of the atom various other informations we will get by seeing the corner of the symbol of an atom so this you keep in mind always that the bottom left corner represents the atomic number top left corner represents the mass number top right corner represents the ions or the valency of an atom or an ion bottom right corner represents its atomicity first one is hydrogen which have atomic number one and mass number one second one is atomic number one but its mass number is two we call it as deuterium third one atomic number one and its mass number is three it is called a tritium so these are the three isotopic form of hydrogen first one is hydrogen second one is deuterium third one is tritium chlorine also exists in two isotopic form chlorine 1735 chlorine 1737 these are the isotopic form of chlorine similarly carbon also exists in isotopic form carbon 612 carbon 614 these are the isotopes likewise various other elements exist in different isotopic form now we will discuss what are the importance or significance of the isotopes of different elements dear students the first isotopic form we will see carbon 12 which is the standard reference element which we have used for finding relative atomic mass right this is one of the important use of isotope of carbon the second use of isotope which we will find in nuclear reactor an isotope of uranium uranium 235 we call which you can see this is a fuel for the nuclear reactor thirdly the third use of isotopes are cobalt the isotope of an isotope of cobalt is used in the treatment of cancer 
an isotope of iodine is used in the treatment of goiter so these are some of the important uses of isotopes so isotopes find various uses in everyday life now we will see isobar dear students just before we have seen that some of the atoms of elements have same atomic number and different mass number having same atomic number shows the chemical properties same dear students isobars are the elements which have different atomic number but their masses are same for example argon and calcium both have different atomic number their atomic numbers are 18 and 20 respectively but their masses are 40 such elements which have different atomic numbers but have same masses are called isobars dear students we have come to the end of structure of atom so i conclude this session in the next session we will be seeing another new chapter on, on physics so on the basis of today's learning i would like to give some easy home assignments here is your home assignment home assignments very easily see you all on another day with a new chapter till then take good care of yourself bye